storm that only happens around once a decade is going to be impacting the United States this weekend. So in this video, we are going to be talking about what threats you can expect for your area anywhere across the United States with it, everywhere from tornadoes to a potential derecho to a blizzard. So starting off by taking a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks for the next few days. Today we have a marginal risk of severe weather for sections of Alabama, southwest Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle. We actually did have a big time hailstorm and windstorm back in the sections of northwestern Alabama. Alabama had a very impressive hail core on the reflectivity, with DBZ values getting anywhere from 75, almost close to 80 at times, which if you don't know is a very impressive signature for some large hail, but at this point most of those storms have died out. Now as we go into tomorrow, we have a moderate risk of severe weather for sections of the mid-Mississippi and upper Mississippi Valley. Now you may not know what this means, because we have not had a lot of situations in this channel's history where this has been in place. A moderate risk of severe weather is a 4 out of 5 on the Storm Prediction Center scale. It is the second highest level that can possibly be issued. Now, this is going to be a very, very potent event. However, probably not in the ways that you're thinking. Tomorrow, we are expecting a big-time line of storms and a potential derecho-slash-derecho-like event to impact sections of Missouri, Illinois, and even parts of western Kentucky and Tennessee. So, a moderate risk of severe weather has been issued, driven by a 45% hatched risk of some damaging wind gusts. The Storm Prediction Center has mentioned that we could see wind gusts anywhere from 70 mm -hmm. all the way up to 90 miles an hour in the area that that hatch risk has been put in place. So if you are in this area, please make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts because this is likely going to be an overnight event for a lot of you guys tomorrow. So please make sure that you are staying aware and you know where you're going to go in case you have to take shelter because at times, winds that are that strong can legitimately be stronger than some tornado events that we've had in the past. Now, there is a tornado threat associated with this and that is actually quite large. It's a 10% hatch risk going all the way from sections of southeast Iowa back down through parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. However, I wouldn't bet too much on the tornado threat down in an area like Mississippi or Alabama as we're not expecting storm initiation to be super huge down there until Saturday. Now, before we move on to Saturday, I would like to note there is actually going to be quite a significant hail threat here. We do have a 30% hatched risk of hail going all the way from sections of northwest Tennessee back through areas like eastern Missouri and western Illinois. Now, you may be thinking, okay, I've seen a 30% hatch hail threat before, but this one is a little different. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I would not be surprised to see this get upgraded to a 45% hatch tail risk by day one, as I have pulled some soundings from this area, and there is a significant drop-off in the dew points that could be indicative of a very large hail threat. Right. And we're going to talk about that more later. But before we do, we need to get into Saturday because this looks like it could be one of the biggest tornado outbreaks that we have seen in years. We have a rare day three moderate risk of severe weather in place all the way from areas in eastern Louisiana back through sections of Alabama. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, if this is going to be some generational tornado outbreak, why have they not issued a high risk for it? Well, there is an issue with forecasting confidence. This event has changed so many times in the past few days in the ways that we've been forecasting it that it is too early to say that we are going to have a definite threat for significant tornado outbreak or a widespread damaging wind event of catastrophic proportions. Now, I would almost bet your bottom dollar that we are going to end up seeing a high risk by day one, and if it does come out, it will likely be for sections of Louisiana, Mississippi, and especially southwestern Alabama here. But as of right now, it is a day three moderate risk of severe weather, which is still a huge, huge deal. And the day three uh, moderate risk zone there, the 45% zone, I've actually personally never seen before because I've never seen a day three moderate risk of severe weather. It's that dark purple shaded color there. But the red, the purple, even the yellow, if you're in any of these areas here highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center, you need to be aware Saturday because, again, this looks like it is going to be quite a consequential tornado outbreak, and we need to make sure that everybody's staying safe down here. Make sure you've got multiple ways to receive alerts. Again, we are going to be streaming pretty much all day for this event if worse comes to worse, so make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Now, before we take a look at some soundings from these areas here for the event, I quickly want to break down first what the models are showing here so that any normal, uh, you know, uh, average Joe on the street can kind of understand what this is going to look like from a surface uh, perspective instead of having to look at like complicated soundings and stuff like that. So we can see as early as 6 p.m. tomorrow, we're already going to have a massive line of storms stretching all the way from sections of Missouri back through areas in Iowa and Nebraska, and our low pressure system will be down to 973 millibars. Now, 
This will continue to sweep off to the east-northeast. Now, areas in northern Illinois and eastern Iowa, as well as southwest Wisconsin, are going to have a very significant damaging wind threat. Again, the threat for 70, 90, maybe even 100 mile an hour wind gusts is certainly going to be in place, which is more than enough to down trees, rip off roofs, and even down some power lines. So please be weather aware if you're out here in these areas. If you have any loose objects outdoors, honestly, you might as well just make sure that you're bringing those in now so you don't forget. And again, this is going to be an overnight event. This is what things look like by midnight. We've still got that derecho-like event sweeping through sections of northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. But you'll notice we've actually got some discrete supercells down to the south in the sections of southern Illinois and western Kentucky, even back through sections of western Tennessee. And that is going to be the area where we're likely going to have the greatest tornado threat, as if you don't know, discrete supercells typically bring us a much higher tornado threat than any linear system ever could. Now, sometimes there are exceptions to this, but in this case, it looks like our greatest tornado threat is going to come across sections of the mid-Mississippi Valley and the western Ohio Valley. So if you are in this area, please make sure that you do have a tornado action action plan in place, because while this doesn't look quite as impressive as Saturday's tornado event, we are still going to be talking about significant tornadoes likely tearing across sections of the Mississippi River Valley. So, uh, again, this line will continue to push off to the east here eventually by 6 a.m. on Saturday. It's kind of dying out a little bit, but we could see some re-sparking of thunderstorms back into the early morning time hours into sections of Pennsylvania, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. Now for Saturday's event here, taking a look at the south-central United States, we can see after that line of storm sweeps through, this is the look at Saturday morning. By 7 a.m., we've already got storm initiation across sections of Alabama and North, or, uh, excuse me, Southeast Mississippi. But that is not our main line here, our main mode of storms, I should say. Uh, as we go into the afternoon time hours here on Saturday, we're going to be talking about these discrete supercells across sections of Alabama and eastern Mississippi here. And again, this area is extremely storm primed, all right? We've got dew points in the 70s, 3,000 to 4,000 joules per kilogram of cape, and over 100 knots of wind shear in the cloud layer in some areas. So a very significantly primed area for tornadic potential. And that lasts really anywhere from 3 p.m. all the way through like 3 a.m. So Again, if you are out here in Alabama or Mississippi for Saturday, you have got to be ready because, again, you guys have not seen something like this, honestly, in several years. Uh, there have been a lot of comparisons to the April 27th, 2011 outbreak, and I can promise you right now we're not going to see anything that crazy. But... I will be honest with you, the setup is becoming more and more concerning, so please just make sure you're staying weather aware out there. Again, we're going to be live pretty much all day Saturday, hopefully, for this event, so please make sure you subscribe with notifications on so we uh, will be able to give you live coverage for those areas of storm chasers on the ground that know what's happening at all times. So. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some soundings here. This was a sounding taken from southeastern Mississippi for our Saturday event. And as you can see, this is honestly one of the most concerning soundings you could possibly get. Uh, we've got 68 degree dew points. If you go a little bit further south, you could easily hit the 70s. 108 3 cape. Lapse rates nearly at 8 Celsius per kilometer. We have got over 600 SRH. We have got ourselves 72 knots of effective layer shear. We've got a effective layer STP dangling in between a 9 and a 10, which if you don't know is one of the highest levels that you can possibly get from a sounding, at least on pivotal weather here. And we've got a dangerous looking photograph showing us a lot of instability, quite a bit of wind in the environment as well. Again, a very nasty looking photograph there. Our storm slinky has turned at 76 degrees. Even in the hail analogs, we can see that we've got baseball sized hail potential on the table. So again, please, please be weather aware here in parts of Mississippi and Alabama Saturday. I cannot stress that enough. Soundings like this are the main reason that I think we will see a high risk of severe weather introduced, uh, at least for sections of Mississippi and Alabama by day one. But anyways, this is a sounding here from sections of our Friday event. This is a sounding taken from southeastern Missouri. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, it is almost just as impressive for a tornadic level threat. Uh, but we're going to explain uh, at the end of this here, after we're done breaking this down, why that's not going to end up being the case. So we've got 181 3 cape in this environment, which if you don't know is just absurd. Typically you need about 50 to 60 3 cape to fire off storms unless you've got an environment with a ton of wind shear. Then you can get it with, you know, even just 20 or 30. 
130 kilo, joules per kilogram of 3 cape, but 181 3 cape is absolutely ridiculous. We've got lapse rates at about 7 to 7.5. Seven uh, we've got 92 knots of shear in the cloud layer and then 72 knots of wind shear at uh, the effective layer. We've got ourselves an effective layer STP at 8, the PDS tour sounding uh, there on the possible hazard type. Uh, dew points there into the low to mid 60s, but you'll notice a significant drop off the higher you get up into the atmosphere, which could be indicative of a very significant hail threat. There are 21 loose matches on the hail analog showing us a significant hail threat, so we might have to look out for that as well. Again, that's one of the reasons I think this could go 45% hatch risk hail. Our hodograph here is obviously not nearly as impressive as our one that we pulled from southeastern Mississippi, but still, that is a very good looking hodograph, very curving, and that instability very clear there. So, the reason that a sounding like this is not going to give us something nearly as intense as our Mississippi mode, even though it's almost just as impressive, is because this mode, again, will be linear, but discrete supercells that pop out ahead of the line, which are a possibility, are still going to have the potential to take advantage of an environment like this and produce strong to perhaps even violent tornadoes at times. So please take this seriously. Now, before we end off the video here, we got a couple more things to look at. Firstly, I want to take a look at the uh, watches, warnings, and advisories map across the country right now because it is just absurd. We've got ourselves dust storm warnings in sections of New Mexico and Arizona there. We've got high wind warnings all the way from Texas back up into North Dakota. We got winter storm watches as well for sections of the Dakotas and Minnesota. Uh, we got red flag warnings going all the way from South Dakota to Texas. We have an extreme wildfire danger as we have over the past few days, and we will continue to see over the next few days for these areas. Wind advisories stretching across sections of the western Ohio Valley. There are winter storm warnings in effect for areas like the Rockies uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Again, I mean, this is just one of the crazier uh, watches, warnings, and advisories maps I've seen in a hot minute. So, again, if you're in any of those warning boxes out there, make sure you're staying safe and taking the necessary precautions. Now, before we end off the video, I would like to go ahead and take a look at this potential winter storm threat that the system is also going to bring. It's not nearly as significant as our tornado outbreak looks to be, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But as we can see here, by Friday night, 8 p.m., we got a big old band of snow stretching all the way from southern portions of Canada back into Nebraska and even sections of extreme northwest Kansas and we actually could see a significant ice threat for sections of the northern plains and sections of west Minnesota by early morning Saturday uh, but for the most part we will likely be talking about a big time snow event with a lot of heavy snow there and again that wind will be kicking things up and potentially creating blizzard conditions at times now if this plays out like the NAM model is saying we could end up having anywhere from a half foot of snow all the way up to nine inches of snow across sections of Minnesota uh, back into eastern South Dakota, kind of a similar story there. Localized regions getting six to nine inches of snow, uh, and then just kind of a splattering of snow outside of that. If you're back into sections of Iowa, you can expect anywhere from a coating up to one inch of snow, unless you're in like eastern Iowa, and there again, our uh, snow threat is lowered, but our severe weather potential is greater. Now, before we end off this video, final time I'm going to say that, we uh, would like to go ahead and thank our channel members. Again, you guys are the best. You guys are the ones that keep this channel going. If you would like to become a channel member, make sure to do that by clicking the link down in the description. It's as little as $5 a month, and you get access to exclusive content, access to uh, shout-outs at the end of every video. Sometimes we do even members-only community posts, so if you'd like to take advantage of all that, make sure to become a member. But yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Again, guys, if you take one thing away from this video, please be prepared over the next few days. This is looking like it's going to be our first major tornado outbreak of 2025, so make sure to subscribe with notifications on because we will be going live for Friday and certainly for Saturday as well. So again, thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.